Rarity, and you're watching Solid Music TV. What's up, guys? Kyle from Solace Music TV here. I'm here with the guys from Rarity. Can you guys please introduce yourself and the role in the band? Uh, my name's Adam, and I play guitar. I am Loden, and I am the vocalist. So we're here at the Solace Christmas Charity Show with Rarity, Curses, Downstream, Rydax, and Goldfinch. Guys excited to play tonight? Oh yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. All the all the bands seem really stoked on it as well. Oh yeah, dude. Every time we come to Brampton, it's like the, every show here beats the last. And oh like, my god, the so the true. last couple shed shows have been so sick. Shed was unreal. It's yeah. just like playing Brampton is always awesome. Like there's this totally like undercover scene here that nobody knows about, but it kicks ass every time we come. And any band that comes here always like kids come out no matter what. Yeah. So I just love it. Yeah, it's awesome. So we're approaching Christmas. Like, in two weeks. So, what do you guys want for Christmas? I want a MacBook, Mom. Okay, <laughs> so, like, all my parents... This is a shout-out to you, parents. Um, so, basically, my mom is like, I'm going to get you something you really need for Christmas. That's not what Christmas is about. No. Christmas is about stuff that you want that you don't necessarily need, but you want to have fun with. So, I want an Xbox One. And, like, she wanted to get me, like... Like a new like camera tripod or something, and it's like I have one. I just Xbox One, Xbox One, mom, Xbox One. Yo, what about, what about the thing though? What the thing? You yeah, that's, for what, the that's thing. what she wanted to get me that too, and yeah. I was like, man. She asked me about it actually. Shout out to Louise. Shout out to mom. <laughs> <laughs> so parents watching, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pay attention. Yeah, really. <laughs> so let's take it back. Take it back a bit. So let's talk about the history of the band a bit, because I know you guys were under face value before, and then you switched to Rarity, and you guys signed to Rise Records. So you guys, can you guys like talk about the history of the band a bit and how it started? Oh, that's fun. Um, well, like you can talk to Loden about Safe and Sound, because oh, that's God. like the original okay. OG shit. So basically, uh, me and Alex and Zach and Evan were in a band called Safe and Sound, uh, and we were kind of like breaking up. We weren't really writing the music that we wanted to write. So we were like calling it quits. We were like, we should start a new band. And uh, so we all kind of like formed this idea to start. Well, Zach was writing new music that was nothing like Safe and Sound at all. Because Safe and Sound, easy core band. Straight up. Um, but no. Uh, and we were starting to write music that was a little more true to ourselves. And uh, so we thought, you know, name change, band change. Might as well do the whole thing over again and do it right. So we did like a music video with Yeah Films. Uh, we did... Like, everything everything that you can do to release a band, or try to release a band successfully, we did that to our best ability. And, uh, yeah, that kind of paid off for us. And uh, from there, uh, Rise was like, what, it was like three days after? Or like two days after. Two, two days after, uh, we, got a, we got a message from Christian, who is now our manager at Good Fight. And uh, he was like, uh, we are interested in you guys. We want to work with you guys. We think you guys sound awesome, and we really want to, you know, hit the pavement with you guys. And then they were like, a label also wants to work with you guys. We didn't know for, like, months. We had no idea who the label was. And then Christian was like, yeah, so we kind of finalized it, and it's Rise, and we're like, holy shit, like, that's wow. fucking, that's crazy. And uh, basically, yeah, uh, because there was already, uh, I think, like, a hardcore band from the 90s called Face Value who was signed, and they got, they got pretty big. Um, so we had to change our name mostly for legal reasons. Uh, but we love the name Rarity now, I think. Uh, honestly, like it, it took a little bit of adjusting, uh, but that was a name we all kind of agreed on, and I've grown to love it. So, yeah, I agree. It's definitely grown on me. Um, I mean, you know if we get drink tickets, ask this guy. <laughs> um, I'm not too sure actually. Ask the sound guy. He'll all know. Right. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> yeah. Say hi to Mr. Daniel Walton. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Yo, bonus features. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but the, the whole switch up from face val well from safe and sound to face value was just like we we wanted to take it as seriously as possible, and we just like we were young and we knew that this was our one chance to actually do it. So let's let's try and do it like the bands we emulate and really like, yeah. and let's work as hard as we possibly can. And I mean, we were practicing in Loden's basement three or four times a week and that was all we're in high school and all part-time jobs and still to this day we're like constantly at it putting all our money that we have into it like that's a my my biggest thing about like after getting signed and going through all this and we've toured quite a bit now and everything it's just like there's this common misconception that you know once you're once you're signed and touring you're set and you're good to go but like we have literally never been more broke in our entire lives <laughs> yeah. we are in so much debt right now and like and this goes to any touring band any kid going out to any show 
whatever it is. If there's a touring band, honestly, they really need your help. Any so any money you can give them, it helps more than anything. And like, that's just the one thing I want to throw out there. Like, <laughs> it, it's tough, but we we love it. It's just it's, a, it's it's what we wanted to do since we were little kids. So oh, yeah. it, we're just so grateful to have had the opportunity to do this and just thankful for everybody who's on our team and who's been supporting us yeah it's awesome that you guys like work so hard and now you guys are signed and like you're getting going with this oh yeah yeah just haven't stopped like we're just constantly trying to you know get better at everything we're doing you know make a make a well-oiled machine just like more organized get smarter about it and keep it as a uh, in-house as possible yeah yeah we, we want it like we're we do most of our management and stuff within the band or, or we just want to keep it all. And like even like yeah. even like even like graphic content, and yeah. like stuff like that, like our cover photos and stuff, like in like pretty much every every piece of like social media artwork out there is like done by the band, and like yeah. just every like it's it's really a, a band effort. We're very fortunate to have Loden in the band. He's amazing with graphic design and video, of course. He actually just did the new downstream video, which you should all check out. Yeah, he's incredible with it, and I mean it. I think it's cool because, like, when I was younger, all the bands I really loved would constantly put out content. I remember there was a time, like, exactly what you guys were doing. People would interview bands and people would do, like, band vlogs and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't really happen anymore. And I miss that. So we're trying to constantly put as much content as we can because, like, you know, kids love that. And even, even if it's just, like, stupid behind-the-scenes yeah, stuff yeah. that, like, doesn't make sense. Like, it's just, like, kids still like to see, like, there's a personality of the band and stuff yeah. like that, right? For so. sure. That's, like, what we try to do here. Like, when we do interviews with bands, like, of course, I want to interview, like, bigger bands and stuff and, like well any band but like also like we're trying to help out the bands like if you watch an interview of a band and like you see that they're like funny or like good guys like that'll like hint you to check out their music and then oh, exactly. you're gonna be like oh they're nice guys and they have good music so i'm gonna support them yeah so like sure. that's what we're trying to do here man i i back you guys so hard oh yeah like i i tell everybody that like the, the you guys are almost like creating like a movement here and i think it's incredible you guys are putting in such so much work and so much effort and you're like doing like doing this for real and for the right reasons yeah like you guys you guys you just feel so genuine you know it doesn't it doesn't seem like you're doing this to get some to like get your name out there or feel a little bit famous or be like a local scene hero or whatever like you guys like it seems like you really just want to help the bands yeah thank and, you so much i appreciate that I, I think it's fucking amazing honestly like this is exactly what you you guys are like exactly what the scene needs yeah. and i there should be more people like you guys and it, it's just sick especially for like littler markets like this like yeah, every, yeah. everyone everyone needs their own support system and like every, every city i should say needs their own support system and like you guys are doing a good job holding it down so, so thank you sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks a lot for that it's very humbling to hear oh man no problem just trying to like rebuild the scene in brampton like this is our second show we've thrown we're planning on doing another one in the new year and like Blake did a really good job of holding it down in Brampton before, but um, I don't know if he's show throwing any more shows for that. So like, I just want to keep throwing them here in Brampton. I don't, I don't, see. Does, does he still live there? I don't even I think, think he. he I think he moved. Shout out to Shed Zeppelin, but like, <laughs> yeah, I think I don't even think I mean, that's a house anymore. But the sick thing is, is like even when when Shed was going on, like and Blake was booking shows, like you guys were still supporting that. You guys yeah. were still helping out, you know, telling your friends and making it happen. So it's like you guys. I've always seen you guys around. You guys have always been working the scene and helping kids yeah. out. So I just, like, obviously shout out to Blake, but, like, you guys are, like, amazing, and thanks for having us out today. And, no like, problem. in the show already, we were just inside. They just opened doors, and, like, there's already a ton of kids coming in. Like, you guys just, amazing job. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> so let's talk about your uh, debut album you guys just finished up. Can you guys tell me a bit about the recording process and just how that all came together? Um, so basically, we've been... I think we've recorded this album three times. Oh, more than that. Yeah, okay. Oh, so God, so <laughs> the initial pre-pro we've been doing for probably about two years now, honestly, since since we were still face value is when we wrote the first song for just, this album. Um, I don't want to throw something out there. The face value EP was recorded like like th almost three years ago now. I could, no, no, two and a half years ago, I'd say. I just want to put that out there because I, I, I know it only came out a year ago. But yeah. Like, like we've evolved a lot musically, and that's you're gonna hear that on this record. Yeah, it's 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 a lot different from anything we've done before, and it's it's like it, we're not like I'm not gonna say we're not like pop punk and or the pop punk band that people call us and stuff like that, but like I don't really think the new record is pop punk, and I think it's more like straight actual punk and like even a little bit of rock in there. Like it's 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 very alternative. 
Um, the guys in Capsize actually called us a post-hardcore band. Which I would I actually call you guys a post-hardcore band, really? too. Oh, yeah, because it, it's also, like, I've also noticed, because you guys, like, you did a tour, a little tour with Silverstein, a little tour with Capsize. Those guys are more, like, heavier. But, well, Silverstein's a post-hardcore band. Capsize, like, melodic hardcore. Yeah. So it's, like, you guys actually fit the bill. Like, I wouldn't call you guys pop punk. Well, that's sick. I don't know if that offends you it's, or anything. No, that, that doesn't it. offend me. That we're doesn't offend heads. me. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Everyone I, in our band, like, that's the kind of music we're into. Like, It's just, like, that's the reputation we kind of got when we released the album, so I'm glad that that reputation is kind of fading away now. Yeah. I'm glad Nothing that... against pop punk no, or anything. No, not at all. Yeah, not at sure. all. Not at all. But, like, we we just, like, well, I don't know. I'm, I, I grew up on, like, post-hardcore and, like, heavier stuff, so yeah. that's why I'm stoked that we're, like, be, we're able to make our old sound work with this new sound. Yeah. Yeah. That's just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking a bit about, like, the the runs you guys have been doing, like, how have you guys, like, made the connections? Like, I know you guys had, like, Derek help produce your album from State Champs and, like, the tour with Capsize, the tour with Silverstein, and then the upcoming tour with Silverstein being as an Ocean Amorosa. Yeah, um, so, so basically, uh, the, the very first tours we got with Silverstein and Capsize were set up through our, our uh, booking agency, the Soroka agency, uh, Brad, who's an amazing booking agent and does so much for us. Thank you. Shout out. Um, but... Uh, yeah, he set up those two tours, and then uh, uh, I guess we just uh, made really good friends with Silverstein. They were really easy to hang out with, really fun guys, taught us so much uh, in, like, literally the span of eight days. And uh, I, was, yeah. I was just... Uh, could you, could no, go, 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 go. <laughs> I, I was just so stoked to meet those guys, because, like, I, was, I started going to shows in, like, 2010, and I always heard about the Burlington scene when Silverstein was just dominating it and there was tons of bands and, like, people who are still around, like, 600 kids would come out to a local show. And I just thought that was so cool. Yeah. So getting the opportunity to tour with those guys, and they're, they're so close to home. Like, they're, like, 20 minutes away from us. Yeah. So, I mean, these guys. <laughs> who is it? Is that right, Axe? Zach. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's got a reindeer head. Oh, my God. I'm in this band. <laughs> <laughs> We just can't get through an interview. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy. But um, yeah, man. I, I I was just so full of questions. Like actually, something funny on our. This is how we got hooked up with Derek and State Champs actually. But the first day, um, we played with Issues and um and State Champs and Tonight Alive and, uh, yeah, yeah. That was the that was the bill, and um. So luckily we were able to meet State Champs that night and our, our manager is actually friends with them so we were able to kind of like, you know, break the ice through that. Yeah. But uh, that night Shane Told from Silverstein actually gave me my first glass of wine. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if people know this but like he loves wine. <laughs> that, was a, that was a pretty cool moment we were just like discussing the old music scene, you know, drinking wine. It was cool. But um, what happened with State Champs was uh, they, they, they were doing a headlining show in Cleveland the next day and we had a day off so they invited us to come play that show with them. And uh, because, uh, we, you know, we kind of got a little more buddy-buddy with them. And then um, I guess Derek talked to Christian. was like, hey, what, when are you guys, when are they recording, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and then it was just set up. And he was like, okay, let's, uh, would you be interested in having me as co-producer? And we're like, hell yeah, of course. So Derek flew out and uh, came in for a week and helped us, you know, rearrange our songs and, like, just, like, kind of make everything perfect. And it was nice to have a, a new ear on things. Yeah. That's awesome. So incredible working with... Uh... Derek from Say Champs, like his band's like blowing up so much, oh, yeah. and that's gonna like bring exposure to your band as well. Probably, it's probably gonna support you and back you. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, it was just very, very surreal experience altogether because like I've been listening to State Champs for probably like three years now since they released the Finer Things. I'd say was when I got into them. Uh, probably like everyone else in the world right now, <laughs> but yeah. like, yeah, no. So it was it was a really cool experience for sure. I mean, and now they're taking us on a, a little run next week, a holiday run in their home yeah. area, yeah. which is gonna be super sweet. Very stoked. We're playing Portland, Maine with the, for our third time. It's almost st starting to feel like a, a second hometown. Literally, yeah. Like... We've got some friends out there, too. Keanu and Topaz, shout out to you guys. We'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> um, yeah, no, just, it's, it's, it's just so cool, the people that have uh, been taking interest in us and helping us do things. It's, it's just uh, it's a dream come true, honestly. That's awesome. Well, like when you're doing music for the right reasons and you're writing like very creative and like good songs, like it that's just gonna come to you guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It uh, it it feels good, and I feel really good about our band. Probably better than I've felt in a long, long time. So, yeah. oh, for sure. Like every, every single day, I, I wake up and I'm just, I, I'm I'm constantly thinking about it. Like there's not a day that goes by where I'm not thinking about what can we do next. Um, 
I mean, I'm and I'm I'm even jamming our record all the time. I know that sounds weird, and a lot of people out there are like, <laughs> "Oh man, what are you music. doing?" Yeah, oh. it's like not cool, dude. But like, I, I love listening to our own music. I, I'm just so proud of it, and I, I feel like we've done such a good job of taking our favorite bands and like adding little bits and pieces to our yeah. band and just like making it like the perfect thing. And I mean, we our our new records. There's a lot of experimenting on it too, and that I think is pretty cool. And you can tell when you're listening to it that there's there's like there's more to come like yeah and that's what i think a lot of people felt from the ep as well that there was def- there was definitely a lot of potential there and i i think you can uh it, it was it was five songs and and <laughs> two, two songs were, like, were actual songs and like that's two that's, songs in uh in three interludes yeah like, <laughs> two, two interludes two songs and an intro that's yeah. that's what it was but i mean yeah it's just the, it's, this this uh this new record is 10 full pack songs um just like we we just spent almost every day for months just like making sure we got every little piece down every transition every single part you know it was it was dreadful it was really hard like it was literally us sitting in evan's bedroom our drummer him shirtless at a computer and us just coming showing up at work every day i'm in a target uniform everybody's just like getting there and just sweating balls and just writing music and it was unreal and very hard but i think it's turned out really well and i'm very excited to see uh to see what the reception is of it, I'm actually very scared too to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I hope people like it. Uh, it's, it, I think it's pretty. It's different. terrifying. Yeah. It is terrifying. I'm pretty sure people are gonna like it. I'm really excited, and a lot of other people have been talking about wanting to listen to it. So, do you guys have like a date in mind, or like a time of year, even like next year? Early next year. Early next year. Yes. Yes. What about for a single? Uh, we don't have any, we're not, we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. We're still waiting on that. A lot of dates are really up in the air, but like, yeah. soon enough. Soon enough. Soon enough. <laughs> not long, not long. <laughs> I'm, I'm just excited for, yeah, everyone to hear it. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. Very anticipated. I was actually thinking about doing like a list of anticipated records for next year, and Rarities is definitely gonna be up there. Sick. Right. Thanks, well, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So that concludes the questions I have for today. Thanks to you so much for the interview. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks for having oh, us. Oh, real quick. Brennan did this on your last interview. Shout out to Counterparts because...